Hello and welcome to the Power of the Plate presentation, or also known as Organic Regenerative Healthcare. So we're going to talk a little bit about what this means and how you can be involved in your own healthcare, what the problems are and what the solutions are and how you can participate. So this is uh, through the Rodale Institute and they have a great program there and they're talking about regenerative health care which comes from the organic regenerative farming and it's a, of course a system in which farming and health care work together in other words we build our bodies with our foods to know how to get the best foods for the best nutrient values in our bodies is important and we need to come together with the farmers that are producing that in the ways that serve us the best so regenerative health care it, instead of managing diseases helps to prevent diseases through an organic whole foods plant forward diet in other words we're feeding our body to keep our body healthy so that it can work for us rather than relying on the huge big farming operations that use all kinds of tox toxic chemicals to solve the agricultural issues and actually deplete the soil and then because of the lifestyle diseases we end up with, we end up um, relying on pharmaceutical intervention just to manage the disease and not solve our problem. And again, this is through the Rodale Institute and the case for regenerative organic agriculture in improving health. Now there's a lot of people that contributed to this and I'm going to break it down into very small steps. So please bear with me. You can go back and you can look uh, for regenerative health care under Rodale and you can get the full publication and find out more and I, I really encourage you you join uh, the Rodale Institute because they have got a great amount of information there and they're just a super group. If we look at the people that have contributed to this then we know that there's a lot of heavy hitters here and they've looked deeply into what our health concerns are today and how we're going to solve them. So what are the underlying factors? Well, big farms mean that it, they're industrialized. They have to be huge uh, so that they can make a lot of money by creating a lot of crops. And so what happens is, is that healthcare also then ends up being uh, a big producer of pharmaceuticals that uh, treat our symptoms. And really, the goal of farming should be to produce food that keeps us healthy and the goal of healthcare and doctors is to make us well when we're not healthy. So when we look forward then how did farming become solely about efficiency and yields and healthcare about managing expensive diseases? And what is the path forward? Well let's start our journey right here. So our agricultural system prioritizes yields and shelf life over nutrition so we don't have nutrient dense foods so what does that do well it produces a higher consumption of conventional and processed foods so it satisfies us temporarily but because it lacks the nutrient density it causes this hidden hunger we never can get enough calories uh, because we don't have enough nutrients. When you have enough nutrients, you don't need as many calories. So we end up going for the sweets and the fatty foods. But what is the result of that? Well, it produces lifestyle diseases. Like when you don't have good nutritionally dense foods, what happens is, is that you're consuming more and more calories and you're never really satisfied. And that creates obesity and it creates an up and down level of your insulin and your body and your blood sugar levels, which then causes diabetes and uh, insulin resistance. And then you accumulate fats in your, uh, in your arteries and then you get heart disease. And it goes on and on and on and on and on because of the nutrient poor, uh, high calorie foods that we So not only do we lack the nutrition, but because we have to use a lot of chemicals on these huge big factory farms we're actually poisoning not only the food that we eat but we're poisoning the ground and the uh, environment is polluted the ground absorbs it and obviously we're seeing 
a big loss of our, our pollinators, the bees these days, because of those chemicals that are used on the factory farms. And not only that, it accumulates in the soil and then as it rains, the runoff into the streams and the rivers runs into the ocean and then it, cr it creates these dead zones in the, in the ocean. So not only do we have nutrient deficient foods, we have the toxic problem that actually causes damage to our gut. And I'm not going to get into that now because this is just a brief explanation. So as Einstein says, we can't solve our problems with the same thing thinking we used when we created them. So just growing more food is not gonna solve our problems. We have to improve the nutrient density. So the problems are there's a deficit in the nutrition and we're eating more highly refined foods with more calories, but no nutrients. And then to top of that, we've got the toxic chemicals that are on our foods and in our environment that we're absorbing and that's contributing to our problems. And then what happens is, is that our modern pharmaceuticals then are so busy treating the results of all this damage, the chronic diseases, that we don't have uh, time to address the problem, uh, which the Rodale Institute has pointed out very, very succinctly here and right so we can see it all. So creating more food that is nutritionally def deficient is not going to solve the problem. And it's going to create us uh, being susceptible to disease. So when we're consuming more calories as we're younger, then we consume more calories as we get older. And we're overweight when we're young and then we're overweight when we're older, not to mention the toxic body burden, great website to go and see what those chemicals are that you have in your body and they're not very nice. So our dilemma leads us to an epidemic of chronic disease. So what is the solution? Well, let's increase the nutrients in our uh, food and let's get rid of the chemicals. So there are different approaches to farming. And again, uh, go to the Rodale Institute and you can get this book. It's a wonderful book on regenerative agriculture and explains a lot of the rebuilding of the soil and that kind of thing. But look, let's look at where we are right now. So we've got the conventional use, which uses lots of chemicals and lots of synthetic fertilizers, uh, gen genetically modified organisms that can put up with all of the uh, extra chemicals we put on it, and then we consume them, and then we consume more of the toxins and the uh, foods that are nutrient deficient, which results in problems that we have. Uh, there's the other one, regenerative, but regenerative also can use chemicals and we don't want the chemicals. But then there's organic. Well, organic doesn't use the chemicals and relies on um, healthy composting to build the soils and feed us from there. And the other one is uh, regenerative organic. So regenerative organic is regenerating the soils by using a lot of different crops uh, together using animals on the field in certain ways and rebuilding the soil in a way that uh, doesn't harm the soil and uses plants to rebuild it and doesn't damage the soil doesn't create runoffs and doesn't erode the soil but actually rebuilds it and again you can have a look at that book it tells you a lot more about that but that is the way we should be going so what are the challenges well, we have to educate the public. We have to educate the health professionals and we have to provide incentives for farmers to move to organic regenerative farming and also hopefully provide some resources. And we need to get the politicians on board. We need their help because they're there to help us. That's what we hired them for. So the most important changes start at the community level. And what can we do? Well, through the Aerosmith Agricultural Association and our connections with other people, we can get more people consuming uh, organic foods at the local farmers markets, the Arrington and Qualicum Beach and Parksville and all over the island. 
uh, we can put on community events that highlight the importance of organic regenerative farming and organic regenerative health care. And the benefits to everyone are they get a better quality of food. It contributes to rebuilding the environment and reducing global warming. It rebuilds the soil for future generations. We can get better jobs now. More people consuming good, healthy foods contributes to more people needed to, to grow the foods locally and not bring them from all over the place. And it brings neighbors together, neighbors helping neighbors and connecting people together, not to mention the intergenerational benefits so no one will be left out. So where do we start? Well, we teach people how to grow, especially organic. We teach them at home, uh, even balcony containers, um, backyard gardens, community gardens, shared spaces, and even up to small market gardens. If you want to learn more, or if you're an expert in organic growing and want to put on a workshop and help us out, or if you're a health professional and want to find out how you can get involved, or if you just want to get to know about the organic growers in the area so that you can utilize their services, or hey, you just want to drop in and volunteer and help out and do what you can, then what you need to do is join the Aerosmith Agricultural Association and that's where the process starts. So you can contact the Agricultural Association, the office manager, by phoning the number and getting more information there. Thanks so much for participating and joining in, and we'll see you at one of the events.